reconstruction. Uh, there are three planes that we usually address, the sagittal, the frontal, and the transverse uh, in a non-rigid flat foot deformity. Uh, two, two of the planal anomalies are usually addressed and one is minor. In his situation, he had it under, undergone a, uh, a frontal plane, which is a derotation of the heel as a major anomaly of his foot uh, with, uh, uh, with some tendon work along the posterior tibial tendon anastomosing it to the flexor, uh, which did not seem to help him uh, in regards to his symptoms. As we look closely, his second toe is right in line with his uh, shin bone. Uh, so this individual underwent a uh, Achilles lengthening to address the sagittal plane. As we look at the second toe in regards to the heel, in regards to the arch elevation, and also he addressed, we addressed the frontal plane, the, I apologize, the uh, transverse plane by putting a wedge, an iliac crest wedge that measured 1.0 centimeter, uh, which he required in regards to, uh, to align the forefoot to hind foot relationship. So those are the transverse and the frontal uh, plane. He's about seven weeks out. So if we may pull the foot towards your nose with the knee extended, as we can see, with the knee extended, uh, it, it is more than 15 degrees. Pull further up, please. Yes, excellent. And as he does that, the foot is straight and aligned in regards to, as we can see, the medial malleolus. So that's phenomenal. So in regards to the dorsiflexion with the knee extended, that's doing phenomenal and the alignment is great. So now let's compare that to the other foot. Pull up towards your nose. As we can see, he com compensates by escaping at the tailor navicular joint. The mid tarsal starts to break and compensate, and the forefoot is not even close in alignment. So as he does that, with the knee extended, if you could, uh, it's it does not want to. It kind of rotates and it just doesn't want to go out. It's called compensation, and it's not what it should be doing. So that's that in comparison to that. Uh, so when we look at the the uh, the work that was done on him, we can see the graft, and we can see the cymaline, which is, if I can put my fingers, which is right there, that's exactly where it should be. We can see the calcaneus and the, uh, the calcaneus and the cuboid line, which is straight. We can see the talus back in the Scott socket, not escaping, and these are weight-bearing views, by the way. And so also, we can compare now furthermore uh, the uh, the sagittal, we can see the cyma line, which is right there. There's no more break in it. Uh, those were done by another provider, uh, as well as the frontal plane was done by another provider two and a half years ago. Uh, I think there was no need at, uh, for, for those to be addressed. As I stated, it was not a frontal plane anomaly. It was more a sagittal and a transverse plane that was more dominant. Nonetheless, uh, he's got an arch. There is something called Murray's angle, which is the bisection of this little bone called the talus. Shoots straight down to the big toe. Uh, so that's also aligned very nicely. So everything looks very, very good in regards to where he should be seven weeks out. And when we look at the graft, uh, When we look at the graft, as we can see right there, and as we can see, it, it's fairly si a large size graft, and it's stabilized. It's called a neutralizing plate. Uh, some, some people use staples, uh, others use uh, pins, others use screws. Uh, it's otherwise, uh, you're trying to relieve the, uh, the compression forces off the graft to, to avoid crushing it. So otherwise, this is what it is and it is looks looks great flat foot reconstruction